Sorry, good Saturday afternoon, everyone. My name is Lee McQueen, and this is Blue Green Fusion. This is the eighth episode of Blue Green Fusion, and I'm really happy to uh, do this broadcast because uh, it goes along with a lot of what I spoke of before about green energy and what we can do as individuals. Um, I do have a few roundups from the previous show. And, and then a couple of announcements. And I'll start with one that I, f I find very exciting, and you might too. It's about the book that I wrote, the Renewable Energy Suspense novel. Uh, it, it's kind of a fixi fictionalization of solar uh, construction company and the chaos and mayhem and adventures that they have in the world of uh, renewable energy. That was just added to West Des Moines Public Library collection, and I'm really thrilled that not only that it was added, but that it will have a, a larger access to an audience through the public library. And there are three reviews for Solara Sun, which is the name of the book. There's three reviews on the McQueen Press website, which is www.mcqueenpress.com, so M-C-Q-U-E-E-N. P-R-E-S-S dot com. Um, and the next step after that is to release Solara Sun as an ebook uh, for more adventures. <laughs> um, I also have a Writer in the Library, which is actually a nonfiction book about writers and how they use libraries to, um, well, I'll just actually read the subtitle, 41 Writers Reveal How They Use Libraries to Enhance Their Skill, Craft, and Careers. And that book was just added to Ames Public Library. So I'm really happy that I'm finding an audience for my publications, and I'm hoping that um, more of my publications will find a home in Des Moines area libraries and then libraries in other places around Iowa and beyond. <laughs> um, Future works that I have planned um, are, uh, I'm working on publishing uh, someone else's work for the very first time, and then also I'm beginning work on the next um, iteration after Solara Sun, which is a renewable energy suspense novel about wind turbine manufacturing in the Midwest. Okay, um, let's see, I'm going to turn up the sound a bit, because I was just told that I need to speak up, and so hopefully that'll, um, can you hear me now? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm working on a, f a future novel about wind turbine manufacturing in the Midwest, entirely fictional, but it's something that I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, past Blue Green Fusion episodes are uh, available also at the McQueen Press website. Just kind of click around and you'll, you should find a link to the webcast there. And then they're also available at the Des Moines Amplified.com website. Um, again, you can go to Des Moines Amplified.com, click on show or host and look for me or Blue Green Fusion. And then all feedback, um, book reviews, webcasts, comments, and even chat if you're listening live right now, feel free to log in at Des Moines Amplified.com and send in your chat. Um, I did visit the Trader Joe's in West Des Moines. I um, waited for the crowd to die down, and there was a crowd, a pretty large crowd um, out there. Um, there was a crowd when I went um, earlier this week. It was a Wednesday morning, about 11, and the store was, you know, the aisles were crowded. There were empty shelves and um, not, you know, for lack of stock. Well, actually, I... It was a lack of stock, but um, I think there's been vigorous and enthusiastic and um, frequent uh, crowds um, down the Trader Joe aisles. And so I did speak with the manager. Um, uh, well, first, I'll just say that it is accessible by the number 11 Jordan Creek bus. I wanted to see how a person who was either disabled or unable to drive or didn't have tra um, access to public transportation, uh, if they were capable of getting out there, and they were. It's not difficult. It's about a 45-minute bus ride. Um, however, in a winter wintertime, it might be difficult to navigate um, if 
the the sidewalks out in West Des Moines aren't shoveled, um, it might be difficult to navigate out there to to and from the bus stop with a load of groceries. Um, but hopefully they will be diligent about that. Um, I did speak with Steve, the manager at the store. Um, he worked in Chicago, uh, which has 17 locations. And I don't know if he meant that uh, Chicagoland, the entire Chicagoland area, including the surrounding suburbs or the city. I'm thinking he didn't mean Chicagoland, the, the nearby suburbs around the city. Um, but they do have the population and the, the tax base to support 17 stores. Those stores are um, frequently shopped, too, from what I saw when I was there. Um, I did ask Steve about the new location um, out in West Des Moines, and um, even just kind of per my own perception, I could see that it was going to be highly supported. Um, I did ask him about a second location, and to my surprise, he did say that it was a possibility, things like this are possible, as long as the first location had sufficient customer base. Um, Trader Joe's has a policy of not locating more than one store within two miles of each other. From West Des Moines to downtown was about eight or nine miles, so location in terms of mileage wouldn't be a problem. But in terms of customer base, um, he did uh, refer me back to corporate. Um, I, I did tell him that it would be great if we, if we could have a, a second location of a Trader Joe's downtown. Um, and so he didn't say yes, um, he didn't say no, uh, he, he did refer me to corporate, which I thought was appropriate. But still, I think it's great that we can keep hope alive um, and um, explore the possibility of having a second location somewhere in the Des Moines area. Not so much the outer limits of the city, but someplace where all populations within the Des Moines area actually converge. Um, so there would be equal access to affordable food that's um, actually healthy food without pesticides, without ge genetically modified organisms, um, and that um, was not filled with preservatives, too. It would be very great if there were equal access, and downtown would provide that equal access. So uh, we'll see. We can do what we can on our end to communicate with the corporate and see if we can get a second location in the downtown area. Um, uh, my second observation <laughs> uh, that I saw at the West Des Moines store is uh, Des Moines cut a pretty large swath through the liquor section. And um, it was really amazing to see. Uh, there were just vast uh, reaches in particular um, sections, and not so much the Charles Shaw wine, because I think they pretty much stocked up on that, but they actually got a surprise by a particular brand or type of wine that, um, in general, it seems that Des Moines prefers. I'm not going to say the name of it, because <laughs> I don't want to uh, encourage more uh, clear-cutting through that section, but they are working to keep that stocked up. Um, they uh, and, and there are also other sections in the store where apparently we, uh, Des Moines and went kind of berserker for the, the, the products there. I kind of think the old top value might have made a good second location. Um, there would have been minimal build out for that store because it did used to be a grocery store. Um, but I would say the next best second location for a Trader Joe's would probably be the bottom floor of the old Yonkers building. Um, there have been questions in the Des Moines Register of what to do with that building, what would go in there, and that's my suggestion. Um, and to tell the truth, the only competition for the produce or the food there would be um, Walgreens, you know, cheese and crackers at Walgreens, or their, the small grocery section. It's kind of expensive there. And then there's a Burger King, but other than that, there's really no grocery competition um, there is the um, Gateway Market, which is a little bit further away from downtown, um, but the prices are considerably higher. So whatever can be worked out, I'm, I'm definitely for.